Hello, I wanted to share with you uh, some more scriptures about Jesus being our Savior. My name is Nicole McGuire, and I am a blogger over at Spiritual Poems by Nicole.blogspot.com. And I share quite a bit of information about uh, some things about me online. If you put my name in a search engine, you'll see I have gone through a lot of different things in my life. And that is why I'm at this place right now where I can actually share some information with you about uh, the Bible as well as a personal testimony. You don't get to this place in your life and you and I'm sure those of you who are seasoned believers know you don't get to this place to talk to anybody about the Lord unless you went through something. And so I have been through some things. I'm a survivor of domestic violence. I'm a mother of four. I have been divorced. I've been in a, a new relationship. I've been out of a relationship. Um, I have also uh, spent time working from home as well as working outside of the home. And I have had my share of uh, encounters with unsaved people who simply don't really want to listen to you. And it hurts sometimes because when you're in a situation, in these different situations um, where people don't want to listen to you, um, you know what the end result is going to be when they don't, when they don't follow and serve the Lord. And so the Lord will give me messages and I will share them. And um, sometimes they're what uh, some may call doomsday kind of messages when in fact they're not. It's just warnings. Warnings to uh, to uh, um, cause these people to do what it is that God wants them to do, because sometimes we backslide and we don't realize we're backsliding. Sometimes we deceive ourselves into thinking that we're better than we are. Sometimes we go around and we share information and then we don't always have everything together on the home front. So when we're doing all these different things, God will send his people to remind us. Um, to get right with him. And so that's what I'm doing today for some of you who have come across my YouTube page, who have visited me on other sites. I'm reminding you that those of you who have been introduced to the word of God, very young, some of you who used to go to church, some of you who used to be um, even deacons, um, Bible study teachers and so forth. God wants you back. Maybe the church don't want you back. Maybe the, the ex-wife or the ex-husband don't want you back. Maybe um, a certain uh, organization you used to belong to, maybe they don't want you back. But God wants you back. He wants you to walk with him. He wants you to trust in him, to believe in him once again. You allow circumstances to knock you off course. But all the while, though, you still know those scriptures, though. You can help the next person. You can edify them, exhort them, and so on and so forth. But what about yourself? You know, you're struggling on the inside about whether or not you even really want to serve the Lord because the world has been looking pretty good to you lately. You've been sitting back listening to the world's music. You've been watching the world's television programs. You've been uh, being entertained by worldly influences. And it's look, the world's been looking real good for a mighty long time. And the Lord's like, well, I remember them days when I used to look good to you. I remember them days when you used to really love my word. I remember them days when you actually tuned into me and you went out there and you did the right thing. And you actually were happier back then. And these days, you're, you're caught up in the false fronts. You're caught up in the, uh, the, the enticements of, this, of, of the devil. And God's saying, no, 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 no. I want you back because I don't want to I don't want to see you go to hell. And that's a message that you haven't been hearing lately when you turn in, when you tune into those uh, TV messages uh, from those uh, modern day evangelists and so on and so forth. The real popular ones, you don't hear those messages of hell, but God wants to remind you that that's where you're headed. That's where you where you're headed if you don't get back right with him. And so I personally don't want anybody visiting any of my pages and not hearing or being reminded that there is a hell because there is. And sometimes we need to uh, go through some things, whether it's a hell on earth or by, by then, by the time we pass away, um, that hell after earth will, will have already consumed us. So we don't we don't want I don't want anybody to, to experience hell. I don't want to experience hell. And so 
you know, I just I just feel led to remind you all that there is a hell and some of you all are going there quickly. The next sickness, you're going to be faced with the dark place. And I don't want to see you there. I really don't. It's going to be looking really dark for some of you all. So with all that said and done, here's a reminder, three scriptures to remind you about Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's second Corinthians chapter five verse 17 out of the King James version of the Bible. So some of you still are thinking about that scripture as if you are still that new creature. You're not that new creature. You're not that new creature. You have embraced the old Jew again. You're talking to your old buddies. You're cutting up with the family members that you once cut off, cut off because they were not about God's business. Now you're back with them, sitting there breaking bread with them, thinking it's okay to cuss and fuss and drink again. It is not. God sees you and he's not happy. You know better. So in order for you to be that new creature again, you're going to have to once again allow old things to pass away and embrace those new things that are to come in your life. God has a plan for you, a new plan. You remembered the old plan. You didn't do so well with the old plan. There's a new one. He said, meet him, get quiet with him, get in that closet or wherever you need to be so that you can zero in on what it is that he has for you. There's a new plan. It's 2012. There's a new plan. That old 2011, 2010, nine plan, no. He doesn't, he's not on that plan anymore. So you need to get caught up, you backsliders. You need to get caught up. Okay. The other thing, chapter uh, two, Timothy, or I'm sorry, second Timothy, chapter one, verse nine, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Okay. So. He saved you. He called you to a holy calling. And it wasn't according to all those things that you did in the past. But it was according to his purpose and his grace. It was a gift to you that was given by Christ Jesus way before the world began. So this plan was already in motion. You fell off the track. You said, well, it was because of this thing and that thing. God, no. And I don't need nobody to remind me. Yes, you do. You need somebody to remind you. Matter of fact, he's had quite a few people come and remind you. And you laughed it off and you thought, uh, you know, I'm still the same. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not the, still the same. You have changed. And God don't like the, this other person that showed up. Some of you all went right back to the old person. Some of you all claim, some of you all act like you have power and you don't. You do not have any power. You've been praying for people and they're not getting healed. They just don't want to embarrass you by saying uh, your prayer didn't work, brother. But they're not you're not your your power's gone. It was long gone years ago. So I'm here to remind you it's time to get right. It's time to get back. You have a holy calling on your life. And once again, it's not because of things that you did in the past. This holy calling was already on your life before this world began. OK, so you need to get back in touch with God to find out, you know, what you need to do, what you need to do to get uh, back centered in that whole holy calling. Some of you all are writers just like I am. You're supposed to be writing. Some of you guys are poets. You were supposed to have published your book a long time ago. OK, you did not do it. Some of you are supposed to be uh, getting your crafts together and um, getting some materials uh, together that have some type of cross or something on it. I see that in the spiritual realm. Um, it, it's some odd colors and things involved there. Um, some things involving uh, some needle and thread and all of that. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you were supposed to have uh, pulled that stuff out. And you kept telling people you were going to do it. And they keep waiting on you to do it. And the money is there. That's another thing. You're short of cash and the money is sitting right there. I'm seeing money all over these hobbies of yours and you're not doing anything with them, especially you, the sower. You were supposed to. And I'm not talking about sowing tithe money. either. I'm talking about the sower, S-E-W-E-R, the person who sows the seamstress. I think you need to get get it together. Uh, I mean, you got these women talking all sorts of crazy stuff to you these days. You laughing, spending more time on the phone than taking care of your business. God put a holy calling on you and you looked at that as, oh, it's no big deal. 
you know, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And the next thing you know, the enemy got a hold of you. You're out here doing all this other stuff that's unfulfilling and you won't say no to these people. God said he is giving you courage right now, right now, woman of God, to go ahead and do what you need to do. And then there's some of you all that are out here right now, a group of you all I'm seeing are ser I mean, I am amazed at who God has sent to this page. You, you people are unreal in terms of the things that you have going for you. Degrees, businesses, bank accounts that I can't even count up that high. And you're not even doing anything in terms of getting in touch with God again because you're still tripping off of old stuff from years ago? Come on. That is not of God. And you know it. And so why is it that you keep coming up with all these excuses? Why is it that you keep surrounding yourself with television shows? You're spending more time watching sports instead of getting in, the, in that word, fasting and praying and coming back to the Lord and repenting and saying, I am so sorry for all these years I've wasted. I know I should have been taking my monies and doing this, that and the other with it. And I didn't do it. I am so sorry, Jesus. Please, if you can just give me the, the word of wisdom, you know, that I'm supposed to do the direct the direction that I'm, I'm supposed to go. Come on. What is wrong? What is wrong? Where's your fire? Where is your fire at? This is I mean, this is unreal. I'm seeing you as if you're sitting right here next to me. You, this group of individuals that have come across my page. You have even read some of my material some years back, back when I was on another website and you didn't know it was me because I didn't have my photo up. But it was me. I was I was writing the relationship stuff the parent and some of the parenting um, articles back then. And you took some of that information and you actually used it. And I thank you for it. But these days you're supposed to be doing, doing some things in the kingdom of the Lord. And you're spending more time clicking on different people's pages instead of taking care of the business offline, turn the computer off as soon as you can and do what it is that you need to do. Pray fast as the Lord. What is it that you are supposed to be doing? You've got money that you're sitting on and you know that you need to do something with it, but you don't quite know what it is. God is moving you right now to go ahead and seek him and then he will tell you what you're supposed to be doing with that money. But you are right for saving it. That's the one thing you did get right over these years. Now he's going to use you to do what needs to be done. Okay. And so the last scripture is for those of you who I see in the spiritual realm that have that dim light on around you some people will say oh there's a light around you it's a dim light though okay some of you are like oh I got that light I know I'm good with God no you're not God said no you're not just the other day one of you all uh, received a message from a woman of the Lord and she talked to you about that light around you and you walked out out or out of her presence and you were like oh okay I'm good no you're not the Lord said you did not repent of your ways you did not spend any time with me and you too are called to pray and fast and the scripture goes from Psalm uh, 106, verse 8. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. You people who got this dim light around you, he wants his mighty power to be made known through you. And your light is dim because you have not allowed his power power to be made known through you you keep suppressing your words whenever you get around the unsaved you keep talking like a uh, and I am going to bring a couple of names to mind a Joel Olstein type when you're supposed to be more like um, a, a Paul in the Bible you're supposed to walk boldly courageously and you're being nice you need you you are at a place right now where you are definitely going to have to get into the word because you are the ones that are teachers. You are the ones that received words years ago that you were supposed to be teaching. And you did teach for a while, but then you stopped teaching. You need to get back to that. Okay. So I came on here today to remind those of you who have come across my YouTube page uh, to get right with the Lord, to do what you're supposed to do, to get out of this backslidden state of mind. Some of you all are walking around here thinking that you're something that you're really not. The Lord has a calling on your life. You've got to spend more time in his word, praying and fasting um, and seeking him on what it is that needs to be done. You missed the 21 day fast that went by some of you all. That's OK. Start your 21 day fast as soon as 
uh, this message is over. That means cut off, start cutting off some things. Uh, don't watch TV tonight. Maybe you typically watch TV tonight. There's there's a fast that that'll start out of that. Um, maybe you typically listen to certain music that you know is not godly music. Switch that music to some godly music. So maybe some of you all um, are at a place right now where you are supposed to be doing um, uh, some things uh, with some folks from the church, but you decided to opt out. You might want to call those people up and uh, get some encouragement and go ahead and lend your service. So that's what is on the table for those of you who have heard uh, these messages coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, and Psalm 106, verse 8. That's your confirmation um, that you, in fact, are supposed to be about God's business. So go ahead and do it. And may God bless you.